Somebody there help me. I said, Praise the Lord. <laughs> we thank God for so far for the retreat. We thank the Lord for the messages we're hearing. I thank the Lord for the impact the messages are making in our lives. And I pray that this message we're considering now, the Lord will bless your life. It will enrich your life. It will be well with you. Am I talking to somebody there? It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. When peace like a river attends my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, water. My Lord, Thou hast taught me to know it is well, it is well with my soul. Everybody sing aloud, it is well, it is well with my soul. If trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded mine helpless stage out of shed his own blood for my soul it is well seen oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is nailed to his cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. It is well. We my 
my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. For me, be it Christ, be it Christ, as truly if Jordan above me shall roll, no pang shall be mine for in death I see life thou wilt wish for thy peace to my soul it is well With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. But Lord, tis for thee. For thy coming we wait The sky not the grave is a goal O trump of the angel voice of the Lord blessed hope blessed rest of my soul it is well with your soul Amen. Open your mouth and tell the Lord it is well with your soul. Whatever is happening here in the world, world, the world is upside down. It's well. Darkness closing up on a nation. It's well. Political turmoil, confusion, it is well. Adversity, adversaries, enemies, it is well. Challenges, difficulties, it is well. Perplexities, men's hearts failing them, it is well. Confusion all around. Dangers besetting people left, right, front, back, and center. It is well. Families having challenges and difficulties. Threats insecurity everywhere it is well
well with your soul well with your life well with your profession of faith it is well in jesus name we pray Amen. heavenly father we come to you with confidence tonight the confidence of faith the confidence in your faithfulness and the confidence in your promises that cannot fail as we come to you tonight lord we pray you pronounce your blessing upon every soul tonight in jesus name lord assure everyone that it is well today it is well tomorrow it will be well all through for the rest of our lives it is well in jesus name whatever adversity may beset anyone lord i pray tonight bring them out in jesus name speak life to everyone power into every life deliverance into every life hope into every life let there be assurance in every heart all problems are solved all difficulties are resolved now in heaven here in the camp there where they are having a retreat with us it is well for everyone in jesus name confirm your word of power and promise in every life in jesus name we pray god bless you you can see now we're coming to psalm 31 psalm 31 i'm reading from verses 7 and 8 I will be glad and rejoice. And then he goes on to say, In thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble, and thou hast known my soul in adversities, and hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy thou hast set my feet in a large room here is a man that knew adversity adversity knocked at his door adversity opened the door by force adversity settled in every compartment of his life adversity settled in every room he went out adversity went out with him he came in adversity came in with him and yet through it all eventually advance progress success achievement power the throne dominion authority came at the end of adversity the end of your tunnel is very near the end of darkness is very near as david saw the adversity as he saw the trouble as he saw all the forces of the enemy nations coming against him in verse 15 he said my times are in thine hand my times are in thine hand nothing takes me by surprise deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me the lord will deliver you and the lord eventually delivered him and he rejoiced because Verse 20, thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. 
He said, you have done it for me. You will do it for all the people too. And thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord. For he has showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. He's telling us he was delivered. And he's telling you, you are going to be delivered. Don't give up. I said, don't give up. Help is on the way. Deliverance is on the way. It says in verse 24, be of good courage. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. And all ye that hope in the Lord, as we hope in the Lord, deliverance definitely will come. I will advance. You'll climb on the shoulders of difficulty. And then you look ahead and you see further. And the Lord takes you from where you are at the point of adversity. And then he makes you to have great, great success. Let me show you one man. Genesis chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 23, Genesis, chapter 37, verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that were on him. And they took him. And they cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. Those were dark, dark days. Adversity for Joseph. But it will not be long for you. It will come to an end. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread with all the wickedness they have done. Their conscience did not speak to them. They sat down to eat. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, the company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother? and conceal his blood come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let our hands let not our hands be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh and his brethren were content and then there passed by the Midianites the merchant men and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit. And they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph into Egypt. They were after his dream. They were after his vision. The Lord has showed that young man a vision, a dream. He was going to reign. He was going to rule. They hated him because he was a dreamer. And because of that, they were jealous. They were envious. They even said, here comes the dreamer. Look at verse 20. Come now, therefore, let us lay him. And cast him into some pit. And we shall say, Some evil bees have devoured him. And we shall see. And we shall see. Somebody there tell me. I wanted you to use the preacher's voice and tell me out aloud. What shall what will become of his dreams? That's what they were after. Or after the dream. 
the vision, the promise of God, the prophecy in his life, the promotion that God had ordained in heaven concerning him. And eventually they sold him. And they sold him to Egypt. We're coming to chapter 39, verse 1. Chapter 39, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him, brought him down hither how could joseph understand what is happening he was passing from hand to hand they sold him to the ishmaelites Ishmael, the ishmaelites sold him to potiphar and eventually look at this and the lord was with joseph do you know the lord is with you in all that adversity in all that challenge, in all that persecution, in all the contra contradiction of sinners against your life, the Lord is with you. And he was, he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. After this retreat, as you go back, Whatever people have seen before, this new thing they will see. That the Lord is with you. They turn to the right, he'll be with you. To the left, he'll be with you. You go to the front, he'll be with you. In your market, where they envy you, where they're jealous of you, he will be with you. In your office, where they want to persecute you because you will not compromise a man of conviction a woman of conviction no compromise the lord will be with you and that the lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer Promotion is coming. He made him overseer. Upliftment is coming over his house. And all that, all that he had, he put in his hand. But look at this, verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, like with me, but she refused. You will refuse. <laughs> Pleasures of sin, you will refuse. <laughs> Compromise. Works of the flesh, you will refuse in Jesus' name. <laughs> the trial will come. The temptation will come to sleep. That he is to slide. That he is for you to fall. But thank God I'm looking at somebody there who will not fall. <laughs> but he refused and said to his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not what is not. What is with me in the house? And he has com committed all that he has to my hand there is none greater in this house than I neither has he kept back anything from me but thee is kept you away from me and that's right because you belong to him you are swine you have had that covenant for better for worse for uglier and for more handsomeness, whatever, for young age or old age, until death do you part, you belong to him. And because of that, he has kept everything in my hand except you, because you are his wife. How then 
can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph, day by day, it wasn't just one moment of temptation, of enticement, of luring him into evil, he spake day by day. You know, there are people in the Bible that live a victorious life every day of, of their lives, like Joseph. No sin, no backsliding, no compromise. That same grace God has given to you. That he akin not unto her, to lie by her, or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there with him. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled. This man knew about the prophecy in his life. The prophecy of my life is greater than the garment. You hold my garment? He left the garment in his hand. My dream is greater. The prophecy is greater. Getting to heaven is greater. And having the relationship with God and keeping that relationship with God is greater than the garment. He left his garment in a hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. That she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he has brought an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me. And I cried with a loud voice. And he came, and it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. Is that the truth or a lie? I said, what he said about Joseph, is he the truth or a lie? He shifted the blame on Joseph. He shifted the temptation, the origin of the temptation on Joseph. He lied against him. What a great affliction when you are holy and he charge you with unrighteousness. What a great affliction when you escape temptation and they are telling lies against you that you actually wanted to commit sin with them until they shouted. Verse 17, I shall speak unto him according to these words, saying, The Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass when his master heard the words of his wife, the lie of his wife, the covering up of the licentiousness of the wife, an accused and innocent person, when he heard the words of his wife, which he spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that he was wroth. His wrath was kindled against two. I said his wrath was kindled against who? Against Joseph the innocent man. Not against his wife, the temptress. But he gave the innocent. And Joseph's master took him 
and put him where and put him tell me now into prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound and he was there in the prison unjustly he had done nothing wrong he was there in the prison but through that adversity advance will come through your adversity advance will come can it happen promotion can it come progress will it come as you have come into that adversity nothing have you done to cause that but the devil and the agents of satan they've caused that you are coming out of that adversity psalm 105 verse 17 psalm 105 verse 17 he saying to man before them even joseph who was sold for a servant for a slave whose feet they hurt with fetters he was laid in iron in the prison until the time that his word came that's an appointed time your appointed time has come from tonight you look up to the mountains from whence comes your help your help is coming from the lord until the time of his word came and the word of the lord tried him and the king said and loosed him the king said and loosed him the king of kings is sending his angels from heaven tonight you are loosed even the ruler of the people and let him go free i'm looking for him let him go free i'm looking for her let her go free verse 21 and he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance he made him ruler of all his substance that promotion still came eventually eventually his brothers came there's famine in their land but there was food where joseph was and joseph was the ruler of the place genesis chapter 45 genesis chapter 45 and i'm reading from verse 5 now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither for god did send me before you to preserve life God sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years have the famine been in the land. And yet there are five years in the week there shall neither be earing or no harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you in posterity in the earth. And to save your lives by a great deliverance so now it was not you that sent me hither but god you sent me to slavery you didn't send me to rule you sent me into captivity to cancel my dream you didn't send me to fulfill the dream you sent me so i can suffer not to be the head but god turned every negative thing they did in the life of joseph 
he turned it to be positive. Do you know that every negative thing in your life, God has a power, God has given me the promise, he'll turn it to positive. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. He became the ruler there. The Lord is looking at your future and is going to promote you beyond your expectation. Verse 25 And he went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and he told him say Joseph is yet alive we thought he was dead Joseph is yet alive anybody alive over there the dream your dream still alive are you there your life is up and doing. Are you there? <laughs> Joseph is yet alive. And he is the governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And he told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, his spirit, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. And Israel said, it is enough. All the sorrow of heart in the past, this night, it is enough. All the crying when I thought Joseph was dead, tonight, it is enough. Everything you thought was gone, the Lord is bringing back tonight. It's enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. They'll come and see you. And it will not be what they're expecting, as if you are down, as if you're almost buried. Your dream is buried. The prophecy is buried. No, they will see you and they will see something great, something unexpected in Jesus' name. There is advance. There is promotion in spite of the adversity. Come to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Advance through adversity. You know, we could have said advance in adversity. Not just that. What this means is there was no adversity. There were favored people, Joseph and Job. They were favorites of the Almighty God, Joseph and Job. And then as things were going on straight, adversity came, but they kept on standing, and they went through that adversity, and eventually advance, progress, promotion, achievement, upliftment came for them. Whatever adversity has come in your life, you will go through it and you will be advanced in life in jesus name job chapter 1 verse 1 there was a man in the land of us whose name was job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared god and his child and shunned and avoided evil verse 8 and the lord said unto satan as i considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect 
and an upright man, one that feareth God and is true as evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Dost thou fear God for naught? Has thou not made an edge about him? That's what Satan was jealous of. God has made a hedge around you. Walls of security around you. You didn't say amen to that one. And about his house. Protection upon your children. Protection upon your grandchildren. And about all that he has on every side. Your house is secured. Property secured. And thou hast blessed the work of his hand. He has blessed the work of your hand. Even Satan knows that. And his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now. Adversity. Affliction. Put forth thy hand now. And touch. What's he going to touch? I said, what did Satan say God shall touch? All that he has. And he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. And Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And he touched everything, everything, everything that he had. And he came to give Joseph a job, the information. And when he saw that, look at verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and worshipped that the secret of advance in adversity that whatever has happened you add it but now you have lost it and satan has touched it but that's not the end of your career that's not the end of your life he worship that's not the end of job and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord has taken away blessed be the name of the lord in all this job sinned not that's the life of somebody who is truly saved a real child of god that in the adversity throughout the period of the adversity you sin not against the lord in all this job sin not not charged god foolishly and satan was not satisfied Chapter 2, verse 1, again. There was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Was Satan a child of God? I said, was he a child of God? No, but he likes to go to the congregation of the sons and the daughters of God. What's the cause? Confusion wants to find a tool he can use he wants to find an instrument he wants to find one of the sons or one of the daughters who came to worship and he wants he wants to tell them let me your hand so i can use your hand let me your voice so i can use your voice let me your skill so i can use your skill so that I came also among them to present himself before the lord and the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down 
he need. And the Lord said unto Satan, As I considered my servant Job, my servant Job, my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, saved, sanctified, and steadfast, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and his choice evil, shuns evil, avoids evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou moodst me against him, to destroy him without cause. Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man has will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone, and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. More afflictions now for Job, because of the jealousy and the envy of Satan. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and he smote Job with saw boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, unto his head. And he took him a potsherd to scrape, to scratch himself with her. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, looking at his condition, isn't it better to die than to go through this kind of affliction, of adversity? No. We're passing through. I said we're passing through. This adversity is not the end of our lives. And this oppression is not the end of our lives. And this danger, this difficulty, we don't know where it's coming from. And yet, you're going through. It's not the end of life. Does thou still retain the integrity? What did the wife say at the end of verse 9? What did she say at the end of verse 9? Curse God and die. We cannot pray anymore. I cannot even pray with you. I pity you. The sorrow, the sorrow you are going through. And the advice and the counsel came from the wife, the closest person to Job. The worst that could happen is that you die. Therefore, curse God and die. No, madam. That's not the worst boil. That's not the worst sickness. That's not the worst pain in the body. That's not the worst to curse God and die after cursing God will lead him to hell if somebody died cursing God blaspheming God he'll go to hell that's the worst and that one is for all eternity but Job overcame you will overcome when temptation calls from the closest person to you that says what else is going to happen what else are they going to do what else are you going to suffer what else are you expecting forsake the lord forsake your steadfastness forsake your sanctification forget everything and you all say even if i die let it go but look at job verse 10 and he said unto her thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh what shall we receive good at the hand of god 
I shall, shall we not receive evil in all this did not Job sin with his lips we're going to read that together one two three go in all this did not Job sin with his lips you'll say it by yourself now I won't help you you can read it one two three go Now you put your name where you have Job because Job has gone to heaven. You are the one that carries the Bible now. One, two, three, go with your name. You didn't read that one well. You read it for Job. Now it's for you. One, two, three, go. You will not see him. In your heart, you will not see. In your action, you will not see. In your language, you will not see. In your, with your leaves, you will not see. Whatever was happening, Job did not see. You will not see. You'll not forget yourself. You'll not make a sleep of tongues. You'll not backslide. Job chapter 17. Verse 9, Job chapter 17, verse 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way, and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. At the time of that affliction, at the time of that danger, at the time of the persecution, at the time of the oppression, the righteous man shall hold on his way. I've opened my mouth to the Lord. I will not go back. I've committed my life to the Lord. I will not go back. The righteous will hold on on his way. And then he says, he that has clean hands, his hands were clean. And he said, shall be stronger and stronger. The Lord will make you strong it will go stronger and stronger in jesus name yeah. chapter 19 verse 25 how could he stand like that sickness disease infirmity affliction adversity things he couldn't understand from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, boils all over, and friends coming to him, saying, confess, you've committed some secret sin. If you were not a sinner, this could not come upon you. No, really. Was well, Saint Joseph, it wasn't sinful. And he wasn't a backslider. And yet, he was sold into slavery. And even for not wanting to commit sin, he was sent into prison. Sometimes, bad things happen to righteous people, saved people, because there's a Satan in the world. And it's at such a time you hold on tenaciously without compromise to the standard of the word you have learned and you will not look back how did he stand at that time at that age job chapter 19 verse 25 for i know that my redeemer liveth he was saved. He had a savior. He had a redeemer. And he said, I know the pain in my body did not cancel my unshakable assurance. The spirit of God is bearing witness in my heart. I know I'm doing right. 
I know I'm living right. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. He said, he's even coming the second time. I see it in prophecy. And then he said, though, after my skin warms, destroy this body, yet in my flesh, I shall see God. He believed in the resurrection of the righteous and the rapture of the saints, whom I shall see for myself. Mine eyes shall behold him and not another, though my rays be consumed within me. Affliction came, adversity came. He didn't allow that to stop his journey. He will see righteous. You will remain righteous. I said you will remain righteous. Look at chapter 23, verse 8. Behold, I go forward. It's not there. Job said, in my affliction, I thought, let me move this way. And then the affliction will be over. He said, but he is not there. I'm backward, but I cannot perceive him. When the affliction came on him, when adversity came on him, he did everything he thought he could do. Prayed the different kinds of prayer he could pray. And he followed different directions. Maybe this will solve the problem. Maybe that will solve the problem. But I cannot perceive him on the left hand where he does work but I cannot behold him he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him adversity confusion at a crossroad and yet there was no solution but don't go yet solution is very near Verse 10, but he knows the way that I take. He knows about my conversion. He knows about my consecration. He knows about my commitment. He knows about my focus. He knows about my passion for wanting to serve him. He knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot has held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Verse 12. And neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. He says, I'm still going to keep on doing that. I'm still going to exalt his word, read his word, believe his word, obey his word. Chapter 29, reading from verse 14. Chapter 29, verse 14. I put on righteousness. And he closed me. Although the sickness was still there. Although the boys were still there. Although there was no medical solution to what he had. The infirmity he had. He didn't know it was actually from Satan directly. But he said, notwithstanding adversity. Notwithstanding the unfortunate situation. Notwithstanding the reverses in my life, I put on righteousness and it closed me. And my judgment was as a rope and a diadem. Chapter 31, verse 1. Chapter 31, verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. 
It's now recounting, recollecting, recalling his consecration. At that early age in the world, a man like this, no wonder God said he was perfect, he was righteous, and he has chewed, he shunned every form of evil. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I sink upon a maid? Let's come now to the final chapter, chapter 42. The end of adversity now came. For you, the end of adversity has now come. Look at what God told his friends. Job chapter 42 verse 7. And it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee. They were not sick. And they thought because they were not sick, they were more righteous than Job. And they heaped words upon Job, words of condemnation, words of criticism, words that brought confusion to his mind. And he said, you miserable comforters. If you were in my place, I will comfort you. But look at all that you are saying. Why don't you keep quiet? And now the Lord said unto them, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends. For ye have not spoken of me, the sin that is right, as my servant Job has. Now take, therefore take unto you, now seven bullocks and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, my servant Job, chapter 1 at the beginning, my servant Job, chapter 42 at the end, my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. Think about that. You are in adversity. And then you are to pray for all the people who are not even in adversity like yourself. You say, but no, I'm the one that needs prayer. I'm the one, I need all the prayers I can get now. I think the old church should just rise up and be praying for me now. They should know the depth of adversity and affliction I'm going through. But no, is this same job that God said will pray in that adversity not even praying for himself praying for his friends that are wrongfully accused him for him will I accept lest I deal with you after your folly in that ye have not spoken of me the sin which is right like my servant Job so Eliphaz, the Temanite, did you, they didn't argue, they were willing to make restitution, they were willing to set forth, set right the wrong things they had said, they were willing to correct the wrong things they had done, they didn't say, we thought what was said was reasonable, God said it's wrong, and so, a life first the Temanite and Bildad the Shuhite and Sofa the Nehemiah went and did according as the Lord commanded them and the Lord also accepted Job tonight as you pray you pray for all the people that have made themselves your enemies. As you pray for them, God will turn your situation around in Jesus' name. Verse 10, 
and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job. You say this one yourself. You say it as if he's coming your way. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Greater joy in your life. Greater provision in your life. Greater assurance in your life. And good health in your life. All the captivity of the past, the Lord will turn it around in Jesus' name. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance before and they did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him alone over all the evil that they thought the Lord had brought upon him and every man also gave him a piece of money blessings coming upon you from every direction blessings coming provision coming in Jesus name and every one an earring of gold so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning the Lord blessed and the Lord is blessing today the latter end of more than your beginning in Jesus name for he had 14,000 sheep 6,000 camels a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she has his. and he had also he had also I want you to before I finish that verse I want you to think about this that same wife that told Job cause God and die Job did not divorce her you will not divorce your wife because of affliction because of adversity and because of a misunderstanding of that situation you will not divorce your wife in Jesus name I want a deeper life amen turn it the other way Job the husband spoke to the wife and said you speak like one of the foolish women in the land don't you understand God has blessed and God has withdrawn why are you talking like a backslider talking like a foolish woman and the woman kept quiet and the woman did not divorce Job saying after all your body is gone after all there are boils all over after all you cannot even sleep on the hard mattress anymore you have to sleep on ashes because of the pains and the sores and the wife could have said okay we're well, even staying around and staying near taking care of you in this your predicament who knows the secret thing you have done and this is coming upon you okay bye bye the woman did not divorce the husband you will not divorce your husband look at your amen and then she had had all these many children and you know how old she would have been to have seven sons 
and three daughters in the past. All those sons and daughters, they died in the calamity of the house falling upon them. And yet, Job, much older, the wife, much older, and when the Lord turned the captivity of Job, he renewed the life of Job like that of the eagle. He will renew your life. He will renew your body. And renewed the life of the wife more than the life of the eagle. And this same Job, with this same wife, the same woman, had also seven sons and seven daughters. And they called the name of the first Jemima, and the name of the second Kezia, and the name of the third Karen Hapok. And in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years after that event, after that affliction, after that adversity, advance came, beauty came, health came, prosperity came, and after this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and he saw his sons you will see your sons. You will see your daughters. And the sons, sons, you will see your grandchildren. Even to the four generations. And, die, and Job died being old and full of days. Now Job is in heaven. The prophecy is spoke about. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He has seen his redeemer now in heaven. And then he said, I know that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, the body was not destroyed. He was healed. I said he was healed. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. He has gone to see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my race be consumed within me. Double blessing coming upon your life tonight. Double promotion coming upon your life tonight. And double provision coming upon your life tonight. Rise up and tell the Lord, I know that my Redeemer liveth, whatever might have happened. Whatever volume of water might have passed under the bridge, I know, I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He is your Redeemer, he is your Lord. He's still alive, he's still alive, he's still alive. There is advance after adversity. Advance through adversity. Advance in spite of the adversity. Advance despite the adversity. Thank the Lord for opening your eyes to see affliction is not the end of life. Adversity is not the end of life. Make up your mind you will not backslide. During adversity, make up your mind, you will not backslide. During the times of affliction, times of trial, times of difficulty, purpose in your heart, you will hold on to your righteousness. You remember Joseph sold into slavery. He didn't say, what's, what's the use? I was righteous. And what did I gain from that? 
I run errands for my father. Obedient. What did I gain from that? He didn't say that. When in Egypt, the tempest came and said, Come and commit sin with me. Said, No, never. No, never. The Lord is with me. The Lord is watching over me. And the Lord knows everything I do in the secret. No, never. How can I do this great sin and sin against my God? He knew he was a dreamer. He had a dream. He had the word of the Lord. He had a prophecy upon his life. And he said, I'm going to stay righteous. Stay committed. Stay firm. Stand holy. Whatever the challenge, I'm going to remain righteous. And the Lord brought him through. Advance through the adversity. Advance despite the adversity. Advance. In spite of that adversity, advance through adversity. And his time came. The time of the fulfillment of the word came. He remained faithful until that time. Committed until that time. Righteous until that time. Transparently holy until that time. And the word came. The prison clothes were taken off him. He was given the authority to rule in the land. And his brother, who had seen, let us see what will become of the dream. They eventually came for the whole family. And he saw the goodness of the Lord upon Joseph. Joseph is gone. This is your own time. And the Lord wants to do the same marvelous thing in your life like he did for Joseph. To fulfill his word. What a promise. What a prophecy. To fulfill it in your life. Make this your time. Make this your time. For him to remove the fetters, the bondage, and set you free. Lift you up. Promote you to high honors. Advance through adversity. See Job. See what Satan said. See what Satan did. You see the loss. 
the devastation the destruction see even the confusion in the family what the wife said when the wife was overwhelmed with the loss of the children the loss of the property and the loss of the health of the husband what she said I was here to see Job standing firm, committed unto the Lord, righteous and holy before the Lord. And yet, no divorce, no divorce, no separation, no change of mind in Job. I know I will get well. When I get well, you are out of my life. Nothing like that. Righteous. I remain steadfast with that same woman. And the Lord kept them healthy. Eventually, renewed the life and the body of the man and the woman and he still had the children that replaced all the children they had lost and had the property all the property they lost and much more the wells the money and he had twice as what he lost and God is still the same he says I am God I change not he turned the adversity into prosperity into promotion and gave them progress that same God is still alive he honors faith he honors faithfulness he honors consistency he honors steadfastness hold on advance will come after the adversity 